Hey, 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 happy day. Sharon Horn Elstrom here. Welcome to day 1108 of What You Up To Now. Today I want to talk a little bit about reactions. Day, actually day nine of our Get Up and Go Challenge, number six. It's actually the sixth 30 plus day Get Up and Go Challenge that we've done since 2020 and the COVID pandemic hit. And today we're talking about your change reaction, how you react to changes or challenges or obstacles or setbacks or things that happen that you're just blown away by because you're so surprised that they happen. You're like, I can't even believe this happened. How do you automatically respond or react or deal with situations like that? You know, we, we all behave in, in positive and negative ways based on the situation, based on the challenge, based on the change and how much of an impact it had on us. And part of understanding and creating a process that will guarantee we have the best results after a change or challenge than before is by understanding what do we do naturally what have we what have we done in the past what's worked for us in the past and maybe sometimes it's worked sometimes it hasn't that's what our current way of dealing with the situation is we want to look at that before we can determine how could we improve that reaction how could we make sure that we are creating a situation that will be in our own best interest so reacting to things how do we react how do we respond is the topic or was the topic of today's get up and go challenge and our homework is to look at when an event or something happens what's our initial emotional reaction to that how do we initially feel what's our initial response emotionally it's always emotional first and then we can decide is that a positive a negative or a neutral emotion that we're feeling and then once we look at the emotion we have to ask ourselves and, and this all happens at a, at a subconscious you know instantaneous level what does it mean to us what does this mean to me what does this change or challenge mean to me right now in the short term and in the long term um, what do I do what do I need to do do I what should I what do I need to do and and do I need to do anything right now or do I have time can I buy myself some time to respond and react and actually formulate how I want to respond or react to this situation uh, it gives us an opportunity to ask more questions get more information find out more facts understand what we need to understand about the change to make sure we're setting ourselves up for the best situation for us coming out of that change or challenge um, can I put it off do I need help do I need resources do I need other people's input um, how have I dealt with a similar situation in the past have I ever experienced anything similar to this in the past and then how did that work out for me is it even my responsibility is it up to me to do something about this or is it something that I can just you know something that happens if stuff happens around us all the time that's none of our business and that we don't need to get involved in um, is it urgent is it important is it necessary or you know we have to ask and answer all those questions for ourselves before we know how to respond but so often we just something happens we respond emotionally and then we behave in a way that we haven't even considered because we don't realize that we have other options than just emotionally exploding about something or emotionally getting super excited about something so reaction love to know your reaction and what you what your your change reaction is what is your change process what's the system or the process that you go through we all have one whether we are aware of it or not at a subconscious level we all have a series of events that we go through a series of steps or questions we ask or things that we do whenever we're faced with a change or a challenge and today it we're, is all about figuring out what that is for you and there's lots of easy ways to do that number one you just go back to and you think through in detail different situations that you've been in when you've had to make a decision or make a re have a reaction or, or have a change or a choice I mean all of us can go back to COVID-19 I mean a lot of us can go back to 9-11 what were you doing what did you need to do with respect to the events of 9-11 uh, what were you doing what did you have to do what did you have to think about what did you have to consider with respect to the changes for COVID-19 you know we're coming up on the one year beginning anniversary of the COVID-19 pandemic at least for us in America and it's a good time to reflect and go back and say okay well what did I do in the last year based on this massive global change and challenge that you know millions of us are facing mm -hmm. simultaneously understand what was our reaction what what do we do well what could we do better what do we want to continue to do moving forward so I love the whole question about reaction because I used to be I my family when I was a little girl would always tell me to pop the cork so that's the kind of person I was I was always a 
very volatile, very emotional, react fast kind of little girl. And so even when I was a little girl, they started saying, oh, Sherry, pop the cork because they called me Sherry. And, you know, of course, that elicited a very negative emotional response for me because nobody wants to be tell, told, pop the cork or calm down when they're already upset about something. So you can imagine about how well that worked out for me. So that was the original thing, though, that my family did because they knew I was going to explode and have a reaction to certain things, especially change and challenges and things when I was a little girl. So it was, you know, pop the cork. Well, popping the cork didn't really get the response I wanted. It was just to shut me down. And maybe the best reaction for you isn't to be shut down. See, we're going to explore and figure that out today. Uh, the grass is always greener on the other side of the hill or the fence or the road or whatever was the topic of supersize your business today. So it was talking about comparison, FOMO, fear of missing out. Turns out there's actually a syndrome called GIGS, G-I-G-S, that is grass is, I guess grass is greener syndrome or something, where you're always comparing yourself to others and you're believing that uh, somebody always has it better or you always have it worse than everybody else. It's kind of a big old giant victim mentality that I, I was really surprised as I was researching the idiom and the origin of it. I did not realize there's actually a name for it in a syndrome. And I think it's probably because there's so much social media uh, fakery, by the way, where people are comparing their life to other people's made up or maybe real highlight reel, but it's always their highlight reel. It's not... Uh, their everyday real life. It's like watching a, a sitcom or a movie and, and being, you know, putting yourself in the place of the heroine and then comparing yourself and your life to them. You're only seeing a little bitty teeny snapshot of what really goes on. And if we remember that, we realize that, you know, we don't ever want to be compared to other people or living in, in, you know, vicariously through them or living in their shoes. If we put ourselves literally in their shoes, we would realize that everybody at every level in every situation has their own problems and challenges and crosses to bear. We all do. You know, people always think, well, if I just got this job or I was married to this person or if I, you know, had this opportunity or whatever, that I would be happy and my life would be better. And it just isn't so. We are as happy as we decide to be right now. And we are as successful as we decide to be right now. So that was our our idiom for today. And of course, it's an idiom from 43 BC in other languages, but it's in the Bible. I mean, I think there's a commandment about that. You know, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife or something. So come on. It's something that's been around for so many hundreds of years. It's a belief and it's a thought and it's a feeling that's ingrained to us. So when we catch ourselves comparing ourselves to someone else or being envious of their lifestyle or their new car or their house or their new outfit or their new watch or whatever it might be, we just have to remember, we don't know what they had to do to earn that or to, to become that business owner, to become that person. And that's our job. Our job is to just become the best version of ourselves all the time. That's our purpose in life is to experience this life as only we uniquely can. And if we're doing that, there's never any need to compare ourselves to other people about anything. We just keep going about our journey and doing the best we can. That's that's the expectation of, and that's how you live a good life is being grateful for what you have and always moving toward what it is that's more of or different that you want. Uh, fun, ch not fun challenge today. Do one thing every day that centers you. Our 365 day challenge this year. You know, we're on day 40 today. So you'd think I could stop saying fun challenge from 2020, but I'm still a little bit uh, shell shocked by the new year. But it was all about unbirthday and what is something that you could give or receive as an unbirthday present? Just an, an ordinary day. How could you make someone's life and how could someone else make your life just a little bit brighter, a little bit better? I think we talked about sunshine yesterday. So a little sunnier and more filled with light instead of doom and gloom. Now it's very, very cold where I am, but I see the sun is now shining. It was, uh, was snowing earlier today. So that's pretty interesting. But what could you do? So we've got reaction. We've got jealousy and gigs syndrome. We've got <laughs> centering and unbirthdays, all sort of unrelated topics today. It's kind of fun when there's a day where everything's just kind of unrelated. That's it. I am working on my regular stuff. Get up and go challenge for the month of February, a little bit into March, and then we'll see what's next. Doing uh, a book review for somebody and 
you know, for me with my eyes, it's a little more challenging for me to read a book, but I blow it up on the big screen TV and just read it on my computer. There's always a way to do whatever we want to do if we're committed to, if we, if we commit to doing something and we say we're going to do it, we figure out a way to make it happen and do it. At least I do. Uh, so working on that, working on a challenge, which I am a little behind on uh, for reasons that I could use as excuses, but I'm not going to because I know why I'm behind. I just need to catch up. All right, that's it. If I can help you in any way, hit me up in the comments below. Ask, direct message me, whatever. I might not know the answer, but I probably know somebody that does. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow to just let you in on my journey as I transition from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world. Have an absolutely awesome day.